What's going on? It's been a while. Yeah, I just put my feet up on my desk. I'm not gonna do that. There's like two computer screens up here and just looks like it's about to like collapse on me. Four, five, maybe seven months, something like that. Um, and on today's episode or on today's segment of the vlog, we're gonna be discussing, how do you guys like my gamer chair? I got it from Costco, it's actually pretty good. Not think bad. It doesn't have like the separated like backrest. I like tilt the whole thing back, but like the separation between the, the, the like the seat and the backrest doesn't really kind of like, it doesn't do this whole kind of like chilled, relaxed thing. I have to really like rock back the whole way and I just can't like, it's not as comfortable, but Eh, for the price, it was pretty good. Okay, so for today's topic, we're discussing weight loss. That's something I usually talk about. And the reason I don't really talk about it that much is because, you know, A, it's not something I really spend a lot of time focusing on or specializing in. Number two, um, it's more of, I just, there's so many factors that can affect weight loss, uh, weight gain, weight loss, stress, eating, there's nutrition, there's so many things that are so impactful on it that it really doesn't always come down to the training and usually someone who's overweight trying to lose weight, if they're not already a high performance athlete, it's very hard for them to lose weight solely from training. It really comes with a few different areas of their life that have to change and I just don't find that I'm the best equipped for it. Now having said that, I've never, I haven't not done it. I have had successful situations where I've I've seen a lot of success and I've seen some huge changes in people, but in reality, I think one of the things that I haven't, that I would have to say I noticed in a lot of my athletes, number one was that I noticed that a lot of them don't really deal with weight loss issues. I never had to deal with weight issues. Um, maybe a couple over the, over the years, but uh, for the most part, it's been something that their sport has almost kind of like cleaned up for me anyway, so it wasn't really something I have to deal with because it was never, I never really had any athletes that had like huge eating issues. But over this past off season, one of my clients, one of my athletes, friend I guess, I could say that, um, came to me and said, you know, he, he had a goal of really trying to redefine himself as a player and really change up the perspective that everybody else had and the kind of the perception that people had of him you know, and what he could do. And we decided that one of the ways he could do that was by drastically changing his body weight. And, you know, the thing that really came about when we were changing his body weight was that he was, it wasn't that he was struggling to eat healthy. I think he was eating healthy. It was that he was eating too much. We noticed that he was having too much of the right foods. So what we did was we just shortened up on the foods. We changed his workout style and we noticed this drop in weight. Actually, we had a bet going on that uh, that he would lose the weight he needed to lose. I think he was 245 when he started. He had to go from 245 to 225 before I went up to 185 pounds. If people who have known me and spoken to me know that I don't use circuit training in my workouts very often. The reason why I don't do that is because you know, I deal with a lot more, I deal with athletic populations and it's really just trying to make them stronger, faster, more explosive. It's a very defined and very detailed things that I want to work on. I gotta stop moving forward and backwards because I realize that as I move further away from this mic, mic that's like right up on top here, like you guys can't hear me. So it becomes like tunnel vision as I move back and you start hearing more like background noise. And as I move closer, it starts sounding better. And so, yeah, we started getting onto that. And so here's a clip Here's a bit of today, you can actually check out some stuff, some of the stuff that we were doing today, and I kind of talk a bit about the little different details, things that we're doing, right? So check that out. So why the jumping after the squats? Well, what you're gonna do is he's actually loading the bar up pretty heavy. So we go up to about 225, which is somewhat light for him, but we're not trying to overdo it right now. We're trying to pick up that intensity. And we do that nice contrast. So we take that weight, get the nervous system going, get, get as much muscle recruitment as we can. And then what we do is we just take it, drop the weight, get explosive. So we're actually going to over recruit, then drop the weight, get more recruitment in the explosive phase. It's called post-activation potentiation. Some people call it contrast training. Uh, it's really just a great way to generate some power. Just trying to get him to uh, feel what that's like, to have that body weight 
the uh, 235, 240 that he was, and now getting him down to 225 and just wearing that weight vest and really understanding what it was like to kind of be at that heavyweight and not like, um, and not want to go back to it. It's almost like that, trying to cue that into that, the mindset and not having to want to do that. He's also not allowed to touch the walls when he does burpees. He's not allowed to put his hands in the air because he kept touching my ceiling and getting fingerprints on the ceiling. So I had to stop him from doing that. I know he heard me. I was trying to say it loud enough just so they could hear me. Yeah, see, yeah, you heard me. You know, that smile. <laughs> I lost. And it up. Worth it. <laughs>